Hello everybody. In today's video, I'm going to talk about comparing fractions and you're going to learn how to compare fractions and which is bigger and which is smaller. Before you do that though, I want to make sure you know the symbols when comparing numbers. So first, let's look over here at the symbols. And when you have symbols, you have this greater than, you have a less than, and you have an equal sign. So how do you remember which way to point them. Let's start with a small number that, well, an easy number that you know of, and that's 125 compared to 356. Well, you know that 356 is larger than the 125. So what you do is you put this symbol so that it opens up to the larger number. And this is smaller, so it points to the smaller number. This gets bigger, so it points to the larger number. And you can think, sometimes people like to think of a crocodile, and these are teeth I'm putting in here, and they like to eat the bigger things, okay? So the bigger the symbol, the open part goes to the larger number, the pointy part, the smaller part of this points to the smaller number, okay? So let's try another one. You have 114, and to compare those two, well, 100 is larger than 14. Okay, now another way you know that a number is, is the smallest is the most furthest to the left on the number line. 14 is more to the left on the number line, so it's smaller. 125 is more, most to the left on the number line, so, and it's smaller, so you put this symbol in. All right, now don't put the teeth in please anymore. It's just so that you know that that's a way to remember. Now, we've got negatives. Negative 125 and negative 356. So if you think of a negative 125, that's pretty far from zero. So if zero's here, it's pretty far. But 356 is even further to the left. So negative, well, negative 356. So negative 356 is further than the negative 125. So we say that that is the smaller number because it's furthest to the left. Okay, let's look at these two numbers, negative 100, and then you also have negative 14. Which is furthest to the left, the negative 100 or the negative 14? Well, the negative 100 is the furthest to the left, so it is the smaller number. Okay, now look at this. I purposefully took these numbers. I have 114, and I have negative 100 and negative 14. See what happens to the symbols? It switches around. So that's important for you to remember when we're doing fractions as well. And even here, 125 and 356, 125 is less than 356, negative 125 is greater than negative 356. So the symbol switched again. Now, let's look at fractions and let's compare the fractions and we're going to use these symbols. All right, so in the first case, it says, um, the first case is it has the same denominator. Now when you have the same denominator and you just change the number of pieces of those same size pieces, it should be fairly easy for you to determine. So for example, right here, I've got one quarter and if I take two quarters, right here, that's obviously larger than one quarter, which is right here, okay? So if the denominator is the same, then you can tell very quickly by the number of pieces that you have in the numerator, and that will dictate whether you've got more or less. So let's look at this very quickly. So in this case, what you've got is four sixes versus two sixes, and four sixes is larger than two sixes. So now let's do 32 one twenty-eighths versus 46 one twenty-eighths. Well, I hope you can see that 46 of those will be larger than 32 one twenty-eighths. Now let's do something just to make it a little bit more tricky. I'm going to come back to this one. And I'm going to say four sixes or two sixes, but this time I'm going to put a negative, a negative. All right, so think about this now because which one's going to be further 
to the left if you're thinking about a number line. Well, negative four sixes is further that way, is greater that way than negative two sixes. So if it's further to the left, it's smaller. So notice that the signs change, okay? So remember that. Sometimes students like to figure it out without the sign first, and then they put the negatives in and they switch it around. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that with this one. I have the same numbers, but this time I'm going to put, if, you, if it's like this, you know it's gonna be less than, but as soon as you put the negatives in there, that sign changes, okay? All right, let's go now to these ones. Now, that was the same denominator, the same numerator. So let's think about this a bit. I have one half and one third. Well, uh, one whole divided into two pieces will be, let's see, here's one whole, and it was divided into two pieces, and this is the size of one of them. If you took that one whole now, and you divide it into three pieces, this is the size of one of those pieces. If you're gonna take the same one whole and divide it into three pieces, well, that would have to be smaller than one whole divided into two pieces, right? So look at that. This is one half, this is one third. And so you can see that one half is larger, one half is larger than one third, okay? So let's get that done here, and let's just show this here. So one half is larger than one third. So when the numerator is smaller, the whole fraction is larger. Oh, as long as, um, sorry, when the denominator is, I, I said that wrong. When the denominator is smaller, the whole fraction is larger. As long as the numerator is the same, okay? So the numerator is the same, so then you look at, well, how large are the size of pieces? relative to each other. Well, an eighth will be smaller than a fifth. So if I have four eighths, that's gonna be smaller than four fifths. So I'm going to go like that, okay? Now let's do the next one. A hundredth is much smaller than a seventh. So if I have three one hundredths, that's gonna be much smaller than three sevenths. So I'm going to put it smaller then. And if I've got Again, the same numerator, I look at the denominator, and I have 50 sevenths and I have fifths. Well, a 50 seventh, the same thing divided up into 57 pieces is going, each of those pieces is much smaller than each piece of a fifth. So this is smaller pieces, 31 of smaller pieces versus 31 of bigger pieces. Well, this is gonna be smaller because those pieces are smaller and you have equal number of pieces but the size of the pieces differs. All right, now that you know how to do that, what we're going to do now is the same concept, except I'm going to take this one, well, actually, no, I'm going to take this one, the one half and the one third, and I'm gonna put a negative here. So if you've got that negative, again, the same idea as what I showed up here will happen. So if you think about which is furthest to the left on a number line, is it one half, negative one half or negative one third? Well, one third is a smaller piece than a half, so the negative half goes further to the left. So in fact, that is smaller because the further to the left, the smaller it is. And that's, and look at this, the sign changed. Okay, positive and negative ones and the sign changed. All right, now we have the um, fourth way of figuring this out, and this fourth way is using equivalent fractions. So with the equivalent fractions, this is kind of neat because um, this comes in a place where you're not really too sure which is larger or smaller because you don't have the same numerator and you don't have the same denominator. So when you have that situation, you want to think, okay, how can I make them so that I can compare them? And the easiest way is to make it so the same denominator. So remember equivalent fractions. If I said three times two, and I'm taking this two, notice, three times two is equal to six, 
and then 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So if I said 3 times 2, then you do 2 times 2, and if I said 2 times 3, then 1 times 3. So now I see that I have same denominator, same size pieces. I have more of them here than here, so I can see that that's greater than that. So 4 sixes is greater than 3 sixes. Because this is equivalent, I can say 2 thirds is greater than 1 half. Now, there is another way to think about this and to do it really fast, because if you noticed, I took this 3 times the 2. So if you wanted, you can actually think, okay, I'm going to multiply this by 2 and I get 4. So 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 1 is 3. And that's how you make equivalent fractions. And you know that that would be a 6. This is larger, 4 is larger than 3. So this fraction is larger than the other. Let's try another one, okay? In this case, we can make the same number in the bottom. So I'm gonna multiply this by four by seven, which would be 28, and five by seven, which is 35. And then I'm going to multiply the five by the six, which is 30, and the five by the seven, which is 35. Notice the same denominator because I'm using the same numbers in the denominator. So now you can compare. You have 28 35ths and 30 35ths. You can see that 28, whoops, is less than 30. Whoops, what am I doing here? Okay, so for this one then, I'm going to just erase this quickly. And I said 4 times 7, I'm just going to write this up here, 8, 5 times 6 is 30. You don't necessarily have to show the denominator because you know the denominators will be the same. And now I can see very quickly that this goes like that, okay? Because this is equivalent to that. All right. Now, let's, um, let's do this really quickly first, and I'm going to do it with the negatives. But before we do the negatives, I'm going to actually do this as positives. So if you did it as positives, you would say 7 times 9 is 63, and 14 times 4 is 56, okay? So if you've got 56 and a 63, which one is larger? Well, clearly the 63 is, okay? And that, um, that's a fast and easy way to do it, and you would have that this is larger. However, it did have a negative in there. So let's put that negative back in there. And now watch what happens. Seven times nine is negative nine. Seven times negative nine is negative 63. And 14 times negative four is negative 56. Negative 63 is further to the left. So it is smaller than negative 56. Okay. And, um, and that's how you would do this. So now what you need to do is go through and you have lots of fractions to practice with. And when you, when you do your fractions um, and you're comparing them, remember the different things to look for. First of all, look for the same denominator. That's the easiest. Then the same numerator. And if you don't have that, then you have to it's, it's sort of like cross multiplying because you cross up and you multiply and get these numbers. But just understand it really is about um, equivalent fractions. And you can use that when you need to. Okay, have fun. Thank you.